What's going on guys? In today's video, we're gonna be installing the brand new Fox suspension setup on the GX. I'm gonna be going over my initial thoughts and impressions, and then my impressions after a month of driving on it on-road and off-road. So let's get into the video. Look how caked this is. You can tell how much it's <laughs> in disarray. Can't even see the castle nut. Um, I disconnected the sway bar from the frame because I got to do that anyways. Kind of get everything out of the way that you need out of the way first. Um, even the uh, brake line brackets and everything, just get that out of the way. It's gonna make your job way easier when it comes to getting the shock out and replacing the uh, upper control arm ball joint if you need to, or if you're putting in new upper control arms. Um, but yeah, don't try to like do the least amount of work because you're gonna have to end up removing that stuff anyways usually. All right, so things have escalated and uh, sway bar end link completely seized. Nothing I could do about it, so I cut it off. Sway bar's there, had to take the skid plate off to get the sway bar out easily. And now I am probably gonna put the sway bar back in later, but with longer links, cause it needed that anyways. So we're gonna run no front sway bar for now. We already have no rear sway bar. Um, not sure if I'll keep the front off or put the rear back in. Um, I've heard mixed reviews. So I think you get more, more articulation with the rear one in and the front one off. Uh, but we will, shall see. I still gotta do the uh, relocate the track bar bracket. I bought like a relocation kit for that as well. But yeah, we're making progress. Now I can do the left side. It was completely seized. There was nothing I could do about it. And so I just thought, let's take the front sway bar off and go from there. So now we can finish the, uh, the left side. It's crazy how much higher the right side is already. I would say with the sag, the left side was maybe at about maybe two inches of lift, not even. And now the, the right side's at three inches. So it's crazy. The GX was like quite a bit higher on the driver's side, but yeah, well, it'll be interesting to see how it uh, performs with no sway bars. The uh, the new Fox shocks are gonna be a lot stiffer and you can adjust like the dampening and everything. So I'm not as worried as if I had no front sway bar with these saggy Eibach uh, springs, then for shocks, I would be in trouble. So let's keep going. You want to line these two i know you probably can't see that on the video but i can so you want to line these two lines up so your alignment is as close as possible i'm getting a new alignment anyways but that this is very important as well as the position of the star kind of star nut spacer uh, that goes on the bottom side all right so we're almost done the front i picked up the correct grease i went with the had to go back to the store Lubra plate. 3000 molly lithium uh, just put that in the grease gun and just did about eight to ten pumps it says uh, you can do five to ten uh, pumps in the upper control arm ball joint so that's all done so now that that's all done on both sides 
Um, we can finish this up and throw the tires back on. Hopefully the alignment's decent. I'm gonna get an alignment as soon as possible. However, now I really do wanna fix that CV boot or put in a new CV because I have a replacement and then take that one off, reboot it off the car and then have that as a replacement. There's lots of little things I'd like to replace and keep doing some maintenance. This kind of sparked that whole maintenance journey. I need to flush the coolant. I have spark plugs to do, but doing this all yourself um, does kind of empower you to keep going. Like I knew I had all the tools and I've done suspension stuff before, but you know, just diving he he in head first. You have YouTube, if you have the tools, you'll figure it out. Uh, you can text some friends along the way, but I find if I rely just on friends to do it and I'm watching, I'm not learning as much. So this has been a great learning experience and let's get this all wrapped up and go for a test drive. So you're gonna want to torque the lower shock um, bolt once the vehicle's level. That's the only bolt that you need to torque with the vehicle on the ground on its own weight. But let's throw everything else is torqued. So the upper, uh, the upper control arm ball joint kind of bolt is torqued to 150 foot pounds. The castle nut is torqued to 45 foot pounds. Um, all of the brake line kind of brackets are back together. I'm just kind of going through this in my head so I don't mess anything up. The reservoir mount is bolted. The top of the uh, shock is uh, all torqued up so we should be good to throw this on i'm just going to go for a small test drive make sure i didn't uh, forget to tighten anything all done for the most part the alignment is definitely a little wonky Hard to tell without putting it on an alignment rack, but I think, I mean, I already knew it was gonna need an alignment, so. Oh, that's awesome though. It's so much more lift, this is crazy. Um, I'll try to show you, I'll try to show you everything. I still gotta throw in the rear this weekend. Hopefully I can get that done. Um, I have to work the rest of the week. I want new upper control arms anyway, so it's like, should I order those and try to get those on soon before doing alignment? I don't know, it's like always one thing or the other, but let's go for a, let's go for a drive. Finally, let's go for a test drive. I went around the block, not even, and the rear e-brake seized on me multiple times. Uh, lifted the car up, tried a couple tricks, and then it would just keep doing the same thing. So I had to take apart the whole center console and I wanted to check the, the adjustment nut on the actual lever. And then I also took the rear tire off. And then if you spin um, the rotor around, you can find these, this little access hole to adjust the um, e-brake through this little like no turning knob thing. Uh, so I loosened it off quite a bit. The, my e-brake might not work that great right now, but I think I need to rebuild it and that's quite a process and I don't want to do that at this specific moment. But I just want to test out the suspension, which I've been trying to do for the last two hours. So let's go for a test drive. I tried to show what I could. I get pretty hyper-focused when I start installing something and I hadn't done this much of a suspension install before. So it's not exactly a tutorial video but hopefully it was useful i mean if you live in canada you can really start to appreciate how no job is as simple as you thought it was going to be another gx guy we're on gravel so we'll test it wow i'm not even aired down and it's a rough road And I haven't even done the rears yet. Even I was a little worried to do this job myself, you know. Um, I've never done this exactly, and uh, yeah, it took a little longer, but I saved a lot of money, and it's super rewarding. And when things go wrong, like on the trail, you're much more familiar with your vehicle, right? If you installed everything, and you've kind of taken everything apart and put it back together, at least in the suspension components uh, realm, then if something does go wrong, you kind of, it's easier to troubleshoot. 
All right guys, so I already removed the uh, factory shock, super easy. So basically I just pulled out the top uh, bolt from the shock and the bottom, you can use the jack to kind of raise and lower the axle um, for what you kind of need. And the jack stand is under the frame. Now we're gonna throw in the new Fox shock and the bracket actually mounts through the frame with a through bolt. Um, you can do it that way or if you want it in a slightly different position you could use rivnut and go into the frame but i'm going to try this out see how it clears the uh, the tire and everything the rear is a lot easier than the fronts obviously um and then we can button it all up i already did the other side and i didn't know that i had a through bolt in the in the thing because i don't, <laughs> haven't been following the instructions so i mounted it where you could see it a little bit better with a uh, riv nut tool and but i think i could have some contact issues so i might have to go with the through bolt um and flip the bracket around so the reservoir is a little bit um it's, so it's more angled than it currently is however i think that looks really good so we'll see i gotta do some testing kind of max out the uh articulation and see what hits and what doesn't but you, my uh, factory shocks in the rear, I didn't think they were that bad, but they are completely blown. Like I can easily compress them by hand all the way down. So not only were the fronts blown, the rears are blown. I can already tell that driver's side is a little bit higher, even though shocks in the rear don't typically add or reduce that much height. It's more based on the spring. When your shocks blow in, it, it can impact it. So. We're going to be higher in the front and the rear, and now it's going to be pretty damn level front and back. So I'm super happy with that. We'll just quickly knock this out and we're pretty much done. I have an alignment. Uh, it's Friday, so I have an alignment on Monday and then we can uh, really start to test it out, go on some adventures, camping trips, stuff like that. So I usually mount the lower part of the shock first and then I can raise and lower the axle how I need to get the top in. And I'll also need to trim this again. I kind of just trim this a bit because this uh, this bolt quite a bit higher than the factory or the Eibach shock. And from there, it's pretty straightforward. So then we'll kind of go towards the uh, knock out the reservoir portion and see if we have any uh, fitment issues. So depending on fitment issues, I actually like how this one looks mounted like this if it doesn't hit the tire under like articulation. But the way I did the other side with the through bolt that it came with, it's definitely a lot more angled. So we'll see, but I don't know how much more that would get it out of the way. You know, it's like this versus that, but you're still gonna have the same amount of area between the tires so but yeah it's the one through bolt definitely can get a little bit better grip on this bracket um but we'll see i think i'm going to keep one how i did it in one like this for now and just see which one i like better um but yeah super easy to install that was literally 10 minutes not even uh just got to torque this down torque the bottom bolt down but it's all in this is pretty much torqued down and you're ready to rumble. I'm keeping the same springs in the back. These are the Eibach HD. I think they're two to 400 pounds additional weight rated. I like how they ride for now. I might switch them out later, but uh, yeah, shocks are all done. Going to get an alignment on Monday. I'm just gonna test it out, play around with the valving, the uh, low and high speed compression, but I'm, I mean, the front's already made a huge difference. I can't imagine the fronts and the rear, it's gonna feel like a whole new vehicle.
All right, guys, quick update on the suspension. I love it so far. It's been about a month and super happy with all aspects of it. I've had a chance to take it off road, um, done lots of street and highway driving, and I would say it's perfect for me. With high and low speed compression, that gives you a lot of adjustability. Um, but overall on the road, even with no sway bars still, it rides super solid. I kind of like having no sway bars. It's kind of fun to have a little bit of tilt uh, around the corners, but you can uh, adjust the dampening and stiffen up the suspension quite a bit. Off-road, it's pretty smooth. I wouldn't say it's like drastically different than when the Eibach suspension was fairly new, but it's definitely softer for sure. And then um, on the street, it drives much better. So it, it almost drives on the street kind of like how coilovers would transform your like sports car. So when I put coilovers on my Subaru, it was way different. Um, and so this is basically a coilover setup with an external reservoir and the Lexus handles amazing on the street. I think with this suspension, it's more high speed driving where you're gonna notice the difference, right? So high speed on road, better handling, high speed off road, it just that uh, adjustability with the high and low speed compressions. So if you're hitting dips, or you're in the sand dunes or something like that, it really gives you lots of flexibility and you can adjust like how much it's going to compress before maybe hitting your bump stops or completely bottoming out. So I think overall, like if I could do some more high speed off-road testing, I think that's where the suspension would really shine. It soaks up bumps well, but I think it, it'll make a big difference. So if I, you know, I hit a little bump in the road going fast and the GX almost catches some air, does catch some air, that's where the suspension will really shine. Not so much like slow technical driving, if that makes sense. That would be more um, beneficial to have like a long travel kit in the rear, like the Dobson long travel kit, where you're getting more flex, keeping those tires on the ground. That the Removing the front sway bar helped with that. I noticed that the front end will stay more level uh, as the tires in the front will kind of like get traction and articulate and um but overall super happy i think it's worth the price especially how much i drive the vehicle in all different types of scenarios so thanks for watching today's video and i hope i catch you in the next one